Hi, welcome to another episode of N8N at Scale. In today's video, we're going to be deploying a quadrant vector store for MITRE ATT&CK. MITRE ATT&CK is a globally accessible knowledge base of tactics and techniques used by cyber adversaries. It's a framework that helps cybersecurity teams understand how attackers operate so they can detect, respond, and defend against threats more effectively. Think of it like a cheat sheet for cyber attacks, helping teams map security alerts to known behaviors used by attackers. Instead of treating every alert in isolation, we can use MITRE ATT&CK to classify threats, see attack patterns, and take proactive defense measures. Now, small cybersecurity teams face overwhelming amounts of raw data from their tools, especially SIM tools. Without context, it's hard to determine which alerts are serious, which ones are related, and how to respond to these alerts. The workflow we're going to be demonstrating today takes SIM alerts, applies MITRE ATT&CK's framework, and provides actionable insights. It automatically classifies threats, suggests remediation steps, and helps teams prioritize responses. Instead of guessing what an alert means, this tool tells you what it is, what it affects, and what to do next. So let's dive right in. We're going to start embedding the MITRE ATT&CK framework inside of a quadrant data vector store. This will convert our JSON into a numerical vector representation using an embedding model. This makes the data searchable in a vector database. Once the data is embedded, it is stored in the vector store and indexed for efficient retrieval. The index allows similarity searches and AI-powered queries. This methodology is sometimes called RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation, essentially making an AI agent smarter by giving it access to this vector store. Now, Quadrant allows for one free vector store per customer. So you can deploy this on your own instance, connect it to your own AI agent, and utilize it as well. So follow along as we go through this process, and by the end of it, you'll be able to deploy this in your own environment. All right, let's get started. So here we have the original MITRE ATT&CK file. So this file is huge. It's about 40 megabytes. And it's got a lot of information that we do not need. So I'm going to be including, but I won't be covering this portion of essentially cleaning up the data of just what we're looking for. So here is the cleaned version, clean MITRE ATT&CK data. And as you can see, it is a lot smaller. It's about two megabytes. Now, I'm currently hosting it in Google Drive. That just makes it a little easier for me. But any, you can even send it into the workflow that we're going to be using to embed the Quadrant Vector Store using a webhook, just sending it into the workflow. So let's take a look at that workflow. So here we are. So this right here is our embedding workflow. So here what we're going to do is when we hit uh, test, we're going to go ahead and uh, pull the JSON file from Google Drive extract the JSON from the binary file. We're gonna then split that JSON into a array object, and then we're gonna pass that into our Quadrant Vector Store. Now, there are a few things we're gonna to have to do in the Quadrant website to prepare this data to be embedded. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I've gone ahead and deleted <laughs> my old Vector Store. As sad as that makes me, what that's gonna allow us to do is start fresh, start from the beginning, and make sure that you get a view from the very start of what needs to be done. So I'm gonna start by hitting create. We're gonna create a cluster here. So let's go ahead and select the free option here. And I'm just gonna call this MITRE ATT&CK. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. We're just gonna go ahead and go with the default options here. And it shouldn't take very long. And there we go. So we're going to wait until the creating status uh, changes. So we'll give it just a few moments for it to go ahead and spin up. All right, so now we're getting not ready. Let's go ahead and refresh. All right, healthy. That's what we're looking for. Excellent. So let's go ahead and enter in here. And I'm going to be deleting this after I create the video, so I'm not going to bother uh, deleting the API keys or blurring out the API keys or endpoints because I'm going to go ahead and delete this right after. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So let's go back to the workflow. Let's make sure that we have our setup correct. So I'm gonna create a new credential. I'm gonna call it angel miter attack demo cluster. 
All right, and we do need an API key, so let's go ahead and generate one. So I'm gonna click on API keys, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. We'll go ahead and call this N8N Cloud API. And we'll leave it at 90 days until expiration. We'll leave it on global, and we'll go ahead and hit create. There we go. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Make sure you copy it before you close this pop-up, otherwise you won't get it back. We're gonna go ahead and paste. We're going to come here and we're going to copy our URL. So now we do want to copy it all the way to that six to the end of that uh, 6333. Go ahead and copy. We'll go ahead and paste. And let's go ahead and hit save. And this is what we're looking for. Connection tested successfully. That means the N8N was able to talk to the endpoint and it did work. So we're going to go ahead and close it. And we are good to go. Now, on your end, we're going to go ahead and leave this fixed. We're going to leave this ID and we're going to actually create the collection by typing in the name here in, in N8N. So N8N is going to create the collection based on this ID. So if you've ever tried to create, <laughs> this is something I struggled with initially, but if you've tried to create a collection before and you weren't sure how to do it because N8N had, it was red and you weren't sure, all you have to do is you manually type it in here and that will push the name of the collection into Quadrant Cloud here. So let's go ahead and close this. And there we go. So we've got our, we've got this set up. So what I like to do is I like to, and actually let's go ahead and create another API key here because I forgot to copy it to my, let's go ahead and call this dashboard login. I forgot to copy it so that we could use it to log in to visualize the data. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this here. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And we're gonna go ahead and access the database. So what I'm gonna do is open the dashboard. There we go. And this is why we needed that API key. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste it so we can get into it directly. There we go. So here we can go ahead and set up our collection. So we can do a quick start, load sample data, vector search tutorials, I'm not gonna bother with any of these. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go back here and I've already set up all the setups here um, as needed. So I'm using the OpenAI embedding. I'm using text embedding small. We're gonna use the default data loader. So here I've already passed in the different bits of data that I want embedded into the vector store. So we're gonna load specific data. And I've already set up the text splitter correctly to a chunk size of a thousand. So all we need to do now is test this workflow and that will go ahead and create the collection and start embedding it. So let's see what happens here. So we're going ahead, downloading the file from Google Drive. There we go. We're extracting the file binary data. And we should see about almost 800 objects that are going to be embedded into our vector store. So let's see what we get here. There we go, splitting it out. There we go. And here we are. So as you can see, it's rapidly starting to embed. Um, so here we've already got 21 items embedded and it's rapidly going through here and setting it up. So we'll give it just a few moments to go ahead and go through it. And once it's done, we'll go ahead and dive right back into it. All right, and there we go. So now we have embedded the entire MITRE ATT&CK JSON collection into our Quadrant data store. Now let's take a look and visualize this. So if we go into our collection here on the back end, we can go ahead and go down to the collections, click on MITRE, and we can go to visualize. This is one of my favorite parts. So let's go ahead and change this to 800 and go ahead and hit run. Now this could take just a moment for it to load, but what we're gonna see here is a visual representation of the JSON objects that we have embedded in our vector store. Essentially, other than for visualization purposes, what this allows us to do is see in a 3D space or 2D space in this particular case, the data that we have essentially just uploaded. Because of this, it gives us a better understanding of how the AI agent is gonna utilize this information to query. Oh, and there we go, excellent. So here are our vector points. So if I hover on them, you can see on the right-hand side which of the JSON objects it's referring to. 
So again, this kind of gives us a good idea of what we're looking at, and it's grouping them together based on distance. Now, we need to be able to reference this. So let's go ahead and move on to the next part of our workflow. Let's go ahead and go to the AI agent. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on here. And I've already preloaded some a prompt in here to make it a little bit more intelligent. I'm going to go ahead and go into my tools, into Quadrant, and we're going to go ahead and change this to my demo cluster. So now that we have we have aimed it at the correct location, we need to make sure that the name is correct. So we're going to go ahead and click on our collection here. There it is. And this name is the one that the agent is going to use. So I've already referenced this in the prompt, and this right here is the collection itself. So now let's go ahead and test it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the chat option here. And we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and erase the previous. I'm going to go ahead and unpin this. Go ahead and save this. And there we go. We now have our chat. So I'm going to pass in a demo sim alert in here. And we go ahead and hit send. And let's see if we're able to query our vector store. There we go. It looks like it's querying it successfully. There we go. So it's identified it, it's found it, it's given us a link to the uh, source. We can go ahead and click on it, it takes us to the correct MITRE ATT&CK uh, location. Now this part is usually something that, that it, that if you were to just use like chat GPT, for example, it would struggle with, it wouldn't be able to usually give you a direct link. It might or might not, it's 50, 50, but with the vector store, you're going to get this consistency that you wouldn't with a, with an AI agent that isn't already trained on this. So by embed, by giving it this indexed and embedded data vector store, we're able to get more consistent, reliable results. So here, as you can see, we have our remediation steps, historical patterns, external sources. What we could do is from here, we can go ahead and set structured outputs. So in the model I have here, we're going to go ahead and once again, aim this at the correct tool or the correct vector store here. And what we can do is we can set this to output in a structured format. So we could require a specific output format, and then that gives us a new output here for a parser. So if I just click and drag here, we can essentially use, I like to use the structured output parser. I essentially feed it a JSON as an example, and then the output needs to match for the AI agent what your JSON output is. So if I wanted to get the tactic or the technique ID, in a specific format, I could, as we see here. So let's test this. So let's go ahead and see this live in a ticketing environment. So let's make our way over to Zendesk here. So as you can see here, we've got our SIM connected to our Zendesk platform. So here, as you can see, we have the alerts being fed directly into the ticketing system. Not particularly useful just by reading these, at least especially to somebody that might be new, I now have a, a very good understanding of where to even start. So let's go ahead and run this tool on these tickets. So I'm going to go ahead and test workflow. It's going to go ahead and get all seven tickets, and it's going to start looping through all of them. And as you can see here, it's going ahead and uh, querying the vector store uh, use, uh, using OpenAI, and it's using the structured output parser to ensure that the output is formatted as we expect. So there we go. So now I've created two custom fields, tactic and technique, technique ID rather, I should say. And let's see here. All right, perfect. We've already got two of them. So T1106, execution, T1093, defensive evasion. Defense evasion. So essentially we're getting, we're starting to group together our tickets using these tactic and techniques. And you can use any of the outputs as custom fields to be able to do this. So we'll give it just a few moments. Let's see if it gets through all of them here. Here we go, command and control. There we go, it's quickly making its way through them. We've also got credential access here <clears throat> and it includes the sub ID here, so that's great. 
All right, we can start grouping these together. Credential access, excellent. Persistence, okay. And there we go. And our workflow is now done, defense evasion. So essentially what we can do is keep building on this and tightening up our prompt to make it more specific and use the underlying MITRE attack framework in ways that you would typically be unable to use in a normal environment. So my hope is that small or new cybersecurity teams can utilize this workflow to essentially supercharge their teams and help them essentially group or find trends within their own ticketing systems. And also for things like graphing. Graphing and visualizing your, your data is so important. This allows you with these structured outputs to be able to do exactly that. And as you can see, I've passed in the summary so it gives a, a slightly more uh, concise summary of what might be happening with this alert. So I hope that this demo has been useful. I hope that by the end of this now, you're able to embed your own uh, collection in a data store. You're now able to query it using N8N and then pass that into any ticketing system that you might be using internally. So if you like this type of content, let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoy it and I hope you get use out of it. Thanks and have a great day.